Robert Spurway, thanks for joining Business Weekend. Well, it's been a good year for you, of course. You've turned around underlying earnings from about minus 100 million to plus 100 million. But was the result mainly because the drought broke and it was a bumper harvest? Uh, no, I think it's very important to remember the year we're reporting on has actually been a significant year of drought, third year of drought, very tough for our business, but also everyone across the sector and in particular growers. Remember this time last year, Sydney was cloaked in smoke. Um, so actually the underlying performance improvement, $108 million EBITDA, is really encouraging as we're delivering on the initiatives that we've put into the business uh, and really turning the business around and driving that momentum ahead of what is a much stronger crop that's in harvest at the moment. So we're looking forward to the benefits of that in this year. And so you are expecting these good results to last for a few more years? Yeah, look, I think the question on many people's minds is what is the crop outlook for F21? Uh, that's in harvest at the moment. I was on the ground in northern New South Wales just last weekend and it was really exciting to see the smiles on our growers' faces and the excitement and the activity on our sites. Uh, this harvest to date, uh, we've received just over 4 million tonnes so far into the network. Uh, that's about the same as the whole of last year's harvest. Uh, just to give you the perspective, harvest will run through at least until the end of January or into February. Uh, so things really looking up this year, much, much stronger conditions, and that's great for our growers and really great for our business. Of course, one of the big challenges that we've seen this year for Australian exporters, and particularly agricultural exporters, has been China and their various trade policies. Uh, how much of a concern has this been for the growers that you speak to? Uh, look, I, I think the impact of trade disruptions are reflected in prices that we're seeing for grain. Uh, pleasingly at the moment, grain prices in relative terms are pretty good. And importantly, Australian grain is very competitive on global markets. So there's plenty of demand out there and we're satisfying that demand across multiple markets. In our business, over the last 12 months, our international team have grown the countries we trade with from 30 or 35 to over 50. Uh, and they've increased the number of customers from just under 200 to more than 340. So we're seeing good opportunities to diversify and there's a natural hedge given the competitive nature of Australian grain prices at the moment that are still, in relative terms, up from where they were a couple of years ago. So good sized crop and good prices for growers at the moment, but some, some tough trade uh, challenges out there as well. You mentioned just earlier that you'd started diversifying uh, your customer base. I'm just wondering to what extent that was a response to Chinese trade policy. Yeah, no, it's not a direct response to any ge geopolitical tensions. It's an initiative we started more than 12 months ago around diversifying the quality of our earnings and making sure we were protected uh, and had plenty of, uh, of options for finding uh, good demand, quality demand for the grain that we export. It was interesting though, wasn't it, that uh, China did single out CBH as recently as September. Why do you think the Chinese government did that? Look, I'm not going to make comment on individual companies or decisions like that that have been published. Uh, what I will say is that Grain Corp's making sure that we're working closely uh, with our counterparties in China, our customers there, with Chinese authorities and also with the Australian government to make sure that we meet all of the requirements of all our export partners in China and elsewhere. It's almost certain, of course, that we're going to have a President Biden in the White House next year. To what extent do you think that will change global trade patterns? Uh, look, we're not really uh, that well equipped. It wouldn't be wise for me to comment on specific US policies. Uh, what I would say is as a, a business that's exposed to, to exports and global agricultural markets, uh, we're certainly big proponents of free trade and rules-based systems. Uh, the US plays an important role in that. So, uh, you know, that's the one comment I'd make, Adam. It's probably fair to say that the World Trade Organisation has declined in its influence in recent years. Have you been disappointed by that and do you hope to see it reinstated in its importance? We haven't been exposed to any impact in that respect, but you know, as I said, I'm a big supporter of the rules-based system, so you know, that would be an improvement. It's fair to say I think we're operating in times where you know, there are a lot of geopolitical uh, activities going on and we want to make sure that our business is able to navigate those safely with the support of the, uh, the trading partners that we have and the Australian government. You mentioned the bushfires earlier this year. Now certainly a lot of people uh, put the cause of those fires down to climate change, at least to some extent. Uh, you obviously talk to a lot of growers, a lot of farmers. Uh, to what extent are they worried about climate change? Farmers generally, and growers in Australia in particular, are an incredibly resilient group of people. 
I've really enjoyed over my whole career working with people like that, but particularly in my first eight months here at Grain Corp, I've spent a lot of time talking to farmers. And uh, the one thing that I notice is often they're very humble, they talk uh, with a degree of concern about the weather and what that will, how that will impact them. Uh, but often it's the body language, the smiles on their faces, particularly over the last few months, that have really confirmed for me that we're moving into much better times, really strong harvest on the east coast of Australia and the smiles on farmers' faces confirm that, that outcome and what we're seeing coming in as we now get well into harvest. And personally, from your point of view, how much are you worried about uh, whether Australia or the world is doing enough to lower carbon emissions? Look, I think it's a, an effort right across the world and it's important that you know, everyone plays their part. Um, at Grain Corp, we're in the agriculture sector. It's really important to us that, we've, uh, that we're seeing improvements in that area because it's important to our growers. Uh, we talked today in an announcement uh, not just about our financial results and the improvements we're making, but also that sustainability is fundamental to what we do here at Grain Corp. So, uh, you know, certainly we were pleased to share the initiatives we've got there. One in particular is the investment that we made in Future Feed earlier in the year, uh, and that's a, a seaweed-based extract. It's a, a science and IP developed by CSIRO. We're delighted to be in that joint venture as a way of, you know, potentially transforming the way uh, the animal feed and animal protein industry works by reducing methane emissions uh, and providing opportunities for us here at Grain Corp. You did note in your results that your business was relatively untouched by the various COVID restrictions because of course Grain Corp is an essential service, uh, but were there any indirect impacts uh, say from the border closures or from the international travel restrictions? Uh, look, I think it's been a very disrupted year for people in business and, and generally in terms of keeping families separated. Uh, so we certainly would, uh, would like to see borders open when it's safe to do so. Our focus at Grain Corp has been first and foremost keeping our people safe, keeping our business safe and in doing so protecting our future. Uh, we've managed around the sort of expected disruptions we'd have on border restrictions and one of the really important initiatives we've put in place is using our digital platforms, the likes of Crop Connect and Fastway that have allowed for a safe harvest this year, so we've moved to contactless harvest. It's also more efficient, and that's been very well received by our growers. Uh, so using technology and digital solutions to respond to challenges around the pandemic and keeping people safe. Now certainly by March next year, all of the federal stimulus payments will be withdrawn, the, the job seeker rate will go back to normal, uh, job keeper will go. Are you worried at all about the impact of the economy after that point? Look, I think agriculture's got a really important role to play in the economy. The main feature of this last year has been the improvement in our business and the preparation for the larger harvest. Uh, we went out and recruited over 3,000 harvest casuals that are now working in regional and rural Australia. Our focus was on finding local jobs for local people. Um, and that, you know, that's been one way that we can support uh, economies generally. And I think agriculture, as we come out of the drought, has a, an important role to play in that sense. Robert Spurway, thanks for joining Business Weekend. My pleasure.